Hello, my name is Fabio Oliveira. Welcome to the first tutorial of the Siren Award. During three tutorials, we will talk about artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning, and how these technologies are impacting the society. And we will talk and learn a little bit about the technical side as well, how we build machine learning and deep learning. At the end of the tutorial of the sessions, we will be maybe able to answer the question, will humans be replaced and healed by little smart machines? Let's see. Before we start, it's important for you to know the challenge I have for you. That is a final assignment, which is a 2000 words assignment that you need to write about the technology, one of the technologies that you will be presented to. The first one is image recognition and the second one is speech recognition. You need to choose one of them, the one you most like it. And then once you choose one, you need to think about one problem. That can be any problem, such as climate change, or to help elderly people, or other, any problem that you may think about, which this technology that you choose can help at somehow to a product or a service that you may have an idea to develop. Once you did these three steps, then you need to explain the reasons why you choose this problem, this technology, and how your product can help people or the society. You need to submit your assignment by the 18th of December, and I will mark your assignment using the criteria that we use in universities and provide you with feedback. This is a very good opportunity for you not only to practice some writing skills and writing assignment in an university style, but as well to receive a feedback from a tutor that works in a university. I hope you accept the challenge and we move forward with this. I look forward to receiving your assignments. In this first tutorial, we will see an introduction to the concepts of artificial intelligence, I will present the reasons for the popularization of artificial intelligence now and explain the main elements, which mean the main other technologies and other characteristics and features that, that make artificial intelligence possible today. Before we start with the technical side and as well some examples of artificial intelligence, it's important to understand as well why now artificial intelligence is in the mainstream media everybody talking about as artificial intelligence uh, was something that can solve all the problems and as well as something that is very important. In reality, uh, all the governments around the world are investing a huge amount of money and resources to develop their uh, artificial intelligence capabilities and technological capabilities. As we are living in the era of big data, as we will see, Governments such as the UK are investing money, research, and putting a lot of focus on this segment of research. And the UK only is investing more than 2.4% of the GDP uh, until by 2027 in research and development of this field of research, and investing as well an additional 406 million pounds in maths, digital, and technical education to help address the shortage of science, technology, engineering, and maths skill. And for doing that, the government created a new national retraining scheme that supports people to reskill, beginning with a 64 million pounds investment for digital and construction of training. And in order to progress with the technology, mainly artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning, the government is investing as well in infrastructure with over 1 billion pounds of public investment, including 1676 million for 5G and 200 million for local areas to encourage rollout of full fiber networks. Another important aspect is the impact that artificial intelligence and other technologies are having in the job market and the opportunities as well 
that these new technologies create for us. Gartner Institute, the major think tanker in IT and advisor of several governments such as the United States and in the UK and for the major companies as well, estimates that AI will eliminate 1.8 million jobs but will create 2.3 million jobs. And this is one aspect that I invite you to think about. Why is that? And as well, which kind of jobs that are most threatened by artificial intelligence and digital technologies? And as well, I invite you to think critically, how can we mitigate that? How can we uh, retrain people and how can we include people in this uh, in this technology, in these opportunities, and see this with a more positive eyes. And today, the demand for AI talents are not being attended by, by us. We have few specialists in AI, machine learning, and deep learning, mathematicians, and people from statistics that can develop programs and software and systems that can uh, make the progress of artificial intelligence. And this can be a great opportunity for young people and for professionals to high skill to work in these areas. The company Indeed, a recruitment company, uh, stated that we had an increase of 29.1% over the last year in jobs related to artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning. Most in-demand AI jobs are machine learning engineers, senior data science, data science, developer consultant, algorithm developer, computer vision engineering, all jobs related to artificial intelligence, big data, machine learning, and deep learning. As you can see, we have a huge opportunity here with industry worldwide looking for talents that can develop new systems and implement uh, artificial intelligence in their processes inside their companies. But you may be thinking that artificial intelligence is something brand new that just started, but in fact not. Back in 1950s, Alan Turing was the first one uh, to state to visioning that artificial intelligence, that machines could think capture thoughts and make decisions as humans. So back in 1950s, 1950s, so this is not new. And in 1950s, the same Turing created the Turing test, which is a machine interacting with a human in the way of the human asking questions and uh, the computer answering these questions. But you as a human interact with the computer, you didn't know that you were interacting with the computer. And then if you didn't realize that the computer was answering the questions, the computer wins. I will not give you the answer who won. So this is the first challenge for you. If you want to pause the video and go to Google, type on Google, use a little bit of the artificial intelligence and machine learning of Google search engine and have a look what is the Turing test about. And this conference in 1956 is the Dartmouth conference, was a very famous one in, in, in the field of artificial intelligence, machine learning and in, in IT in general. Uh, where several scientists from around the world met together to talk and to present papers and ideas, concepts about artificial intelligence and machine learning. From the years of 1958 to 1970, top thinkers predicted that computers would suppress humans in the near future. This was back in the 1970s, where we didn't have a huge computer power available. What I mean about computer power? Only very rich people had access to a simple desktop. <laughs> in fact, we didn't have desktops back there. We had computers that was uh, pretty much the size of a big room, uh, waiting tons, and very slow computers. 
and computers were able to compute very simple tasks such as answer yes or no or identifying if a card was being punched in one side left or in the other right so very simple tasks but back there people very intelligent people very smart people already talked that computers would surpass would replace human in the near future <music> But in fact, what happened was that we entered in the first AI winter, which means that funding for AI experiments, AI development and research just dried up for AI projects. Because back then, as I said before, the machines, the computers, they were very slow. We didn't have a very good network connecting all the world. And we didn't have as well good access to data and a good way of storage data. Data is the main, let's say, raw material for developing artificial intelligence and machine learning and deep learning. Therefore, people, the investors that used to fund this research and uh, they didn't find a high value in this project because you had to invest a lot of money to get very few out of that but then uh, from 1980s the things started changing the computers get more powerful companies such as ibm xerox and other companies that uh, worked a lot in development of the technology, hardware and software as well. And expert systems were able to perform very impressive tasks for that time. So, such as some companies like Exicom deployed around uh, some expert systems that could automatize transform uh, some process inside the company to when i say the machine the computer was able to perform some tasks that reduced costs saving for the company around 25 million dollars in one year and that got the attention of other companies as well But then in 1993, the second AI winter came back and begins as expert systems fall out of favor <laughs> again because they were able just to perform very simple tasks and the investments and the work necessary to implement these systems inside companies and governments were too higher to the level of returns that did provided to these companies. <music> And in 1997, IBM Deep Blue project, which is, exists until today, uh, has beaten chess grandmaster Gary Kasparov. And that was the first demonstration that a computer, a software, could indeed think, if you may say that, as a human and defeat a human in very, let's say, procedural and mechanical thinking which is the case of uh, chess games, where you have several rules and the game is pretty much mathematical in the sense that you need to move your pieces around, uh, but uh, making calculations and trying to predict uh, the movement of the player, of the other player. So, and then again, this got the attention of the academics, of the research community, and of course, all the other companies. And IBM, as a lead company in the IT industry, start pushing, pushing, pushing to spread the news and make more investments in this kind of system. And then in 2000s, mainly from 2005, Google, some scientists from Google wrote uh, the first paper with the concept of big data. And big data became something real, which is the amount of information that all the devices connect to the internet and collect. And this information can be used to analytics that will never be the same again in the way that companies, people, and governments make decisions, looking at the data, entering an era of data-driven decision-making. So, and then, of course, to dealing 
and to analyze a huge amount of data, we need technology. And then artificial intelligence, machine learning uh, started flourishing. And then in 2011, IBM Watson. IBM Watson is a cognitive system based in artificial intelligence, mainly deep learning and neural networks, uh, beats two human champion at Geopard game, a television game, and showing that, again, an artificial intelligence could think and answer questions in a human way, as we do. So that got attention again, and more investments and more deployment of artificial intelligence start flourishing. In 2008, AI investments reach another record high and keep growing now until today. In the situation we have today, where uh, most of the companies are investing a lot of money and believing that the technology can indeed reduce the costs, making uh, the companies more efficient and more productivity. If we will enter in another AI winter, we don't know. And if the investments in AI will keep growing, we need to wait to see. What I invite you to think about is how you can work alongside this technology and as well take advantage of this technology in the sense that you can learn, you can as well understand how this technology works. This is very important because most of the companies now they indeed believe that AI can help and will not stop to be implemented in companies and around the world, in all the, the, the society, in all the devices that we use, we're going to have some kind of artificial intelligence embedded and working for us and alongside us. So what is the state of the affairs now in terms of AI? machine learning and deep learning. I would ask you to stop this video now in this slide and think about how people, your parents, your grandma, your granddaddy used to do these simple activities in the past. You may be you may be think this is difficult to imagine but you have Google so <laughs> again uh, make a Google search and then you will be able to have some ideas. This is important because you will see that the development of the technology is very fast and is progressing. And the way we used to do things 20 years ago, even 10 years ago, 15 years ago, was very different than the way we do today. After you finish this activity, uh, you may answer the following question. How does technology is changing the way people act and the way people perform? Simple activities such as this three that I provide to you. To find an address, to find a specific book in a library, and even to send a written message to someone in other city or other country. Think about those aspects and write down some comments. Indeed, it's very difficult to find one single definition for artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence are systems. You don't have such kind of artificial intelligence product or service. You have a concept of artificial intelligence, which is the ability of a machine to execute cognitive functions. When I say cognitive functions is such as answering questions or predicting or forecasting or finding patterns in data associated with the human mind in a way that the machines they can perceive environment such as a vacuum cleaner robot can can do reasoning such as watson from ibm can do learning interacting with the environment and solving problems or even exercising creativity sometimes so this is about the concept, the broad concept of artificial intelligence. And how to apply this concept, then you need subfields of artificial intelligence that we will see following. As I said, we have two subfields of artificial intelligence. The first one is machine learning 
and the second one deep learning deep learning is is we'll talk more about this but this is a baby still just started the development is pretty new but has achieved already very good results so machine learning needs uh, programming coding of course mainly in python or c or java programming language and needed data and as well need a problem to be solved in a broadly sense and for simplicity machine learning is a more simple discipline is easier to learn and is easier to implement in the sense that you need to invest less money as a company to implement this kind of technology and machine learning can be applied for simple problems such as a price prediction based on best values or a stock option price in the future or as well to try to forecast the best quantity of any kind of product in the future so and machine learning is used as well for implementation of automation of process in companies for example if your company has a receptionist that fills some forms when people arrive you can use a machine learning system to perform this task uh, for you rather than having a human doing this kind of task so that would be the person arriving in your company and then the person can type his name uh, vehicle plate and all the personal information necessary and as well type the name of the person that he is visiting and then uh, in a computer and a machine learning system will make all the the actions that a human used to do in the sense of registering in the sense of sending a message to uh, the person that has been visited and so on and so forth so this is done by machine learning and we have deep learning deep learning as i said before is a new field of research it's very new but uh, it has been applied for several kind of problems for example for the autonomous car the driverless car driverless car use several uh, deep learning algorithms to perform calculations identify if your car is if your car in front of you is in movement or is stopped is parked and so on and so forth uh, image recognition speech recognition all these tasks are being performed by deep learning models but we have four elements that makes all these disciplines possible why was that not possible in the past as I said before, to have access to data in the past, uh, to store data was very, very difficult and expensive. Nowadays, the things change. With a very good internet connection, a very good network of communications, and with several devices such as mobile phones, such as uh, appliances connect to the internet, uh, television, and the digital payment method. All these kind of interactions create a huge amount of data. And this data is stored by the companies that can use this data for making better decisions. Data, you need to think about data uh, in several ways. Data has different formats. You can have audio data, you can have text data, numerical data, image is a data, video is another kind of data. So you put all this together and then you can use this data, this information to identify uh, patterns, to identify trends, to identify which kind of products people are buying, identify customer behavior, so you name it. You can use this data for several reasons. And now it's much cheaper to store, and to have access to this data. And we have the algorithms as well. Algorithms are related to the machine learning, the deep learning. So without algorithms uh, that are, let's say, the functions, mathematical functions, statistical functions that try to reduce the uncertainty of a problem and generate some hypothesis, Without algorithm, we don't have machine learning and deep learning as well. And of course, with the computing power increasing, now we have available mobile phones that have huge 
computer capacity, laptops with huge computing capacity, we have the graphic processing unit in uh, processor in PlayStation, in Xbox, uh, that can perform huge quantity of computation inside. Then mathematics and statistics progressed a lot due to that, due to the capacity of computation. And we have these scenarios. When you, you see these words scenarios, it means that you have demand. You have companies and people interested uh, to implement artificial intelligence in their companies and in their lives. For example, we like uh, to use mobile phones, to have Facebook, to have Instagram, and as well to buy online. This is a kind of scenario where you can apply several machine learning and deep learning. Uh, technology in order to provide this kind of services and convenience to us. And in the industry is the same thing as we will see in the following slide. So some scenarios for the applications of artificial intelligence. The most popular is the driverless car, where we have several sensors inside the car, collecting information from the environment. And then we have artificial intelligence in the car that can compute everything and making decisions. Making decisions in the sense that for us humans look like very simple decisions such as stop the car where a car is parked in front of you or turn left or turn right or uh, accelerate. This is, this is kind of very simple decisions for the human cognition but for a machine it requires a lot of effort. And we have several challenges to be overcome still until we, ha we have and we achieve a 100% driverless car. We have smart home. Today we can have all our appliances connected to the internet as we have televisions connected to the internet. We have smart meters for gas and electricity and even blenders or cup makers are already able to connect to the internet and you can command this appliance using your mobile phone, an app in your mobile phone. You can automatize your whole house. We have a virtual reality. Virtual reality uh, is booming now due to the pandemic and the social distance requirements. So virtual reality can be used in several applications, you name it. You can think about in education, you can think about in retail, you can think uh, in training for companies, training employees. So I will not give you all the answers. Uh, I suggest you to research and to read the material I provided and as well some videos that I posted on the VLE system. So then you can come up with new ideas and as well applications of this technology. We have what we call intelligent robot, but it's not intelligent as a human, okay? It's more intelligent in the sense of perceiving and as well uh, making some smart decision. For example, again, with the, the social distancing and with the COVID-19 problem, companies mainly in America and in China and as well in Japan are implementing, implementing several robots in the hospitality industry and in the health industry as well. A robot can, for example, be a receptionist of a restaurant and do face recognition when you arrive and if you are a returning customer and you have your data in their system, it can greet you by your name and then as well provide you some kind of voucher as a reward for your loyalty and can as well drive you into a, a table. So you have several applications. I will give you another interesting data that you can again research on the internet. Amazon has more than 200,000 robots operating their warehouses. Have a look in this kind of robots, very interesting. And we have Smart Investment Advisor. Uh, this industry of investment and as well of insurance, they use machine learning and artificial intelligence since the 70s. So, and today, another number that is impressive is that 90, 90% of all the purchasing and selling of stock options are done by machine learning worldwide. And most of the decisions that the banks do today regarding to 
lending and borrowing money is done by machine learning and deep learning as well. And we have the intelligence healthcare applications. The intelligence healthcare is helping and supporting the development, it's helping and supporting the development of new drugs, new treatments in a speed that was never seen before. I will not give you all the answers. Again, I suggest you to read all the articles I posted and to do further research on the internet about that. These are uh, the main scenarios. Of course, you have much more scenarios, much more possibilities. And I want to invite you to think broadly about that uh, in a way that you can build your final assignment and have some intuition and creativity on that as well. So what make AI possible? In such a way, we already talked about that, but I will now do a kind of wrap up and input more information for you. But we have the infrastructure, of course. We have hardware, hardware in the sense of computers, servers, and data centers around the world. So we have a lot of hardware available. We have computing power as well, in the sense of computational power. If you look at your computer, you have an Intel or an AMD processor. These processors, they are incredible nowadays. They are very powerful. You can perform multitasking. You can uh, perform computation with a huge amount of data in your computer. So, and we have the big data that we talk. With. We have as well the algorithms, as I said, pretty much related to progress and new developments on mathematics and statistics. And this is the heart. This is the main nook the main cell of uh, artificial intelligence. We have the technology direction, so computer vision, speech processing, natural language processing, planning and decision making systems, big data and statistical analysis, and we have the tech technologies per se, that is image recognition, voice recognition, speech recognition, semantic understanding, what do I mean by that? For example, uh, we have systems that can follow all the tweets of a person and then this system can output, can give you the information that the people that are following you are replaying or are comment, are comment about your writing, about your posts in a positive or negative way. Actually, several companies use that to monitor the performance of their marketing campaigns and as well their communication with uh, the public. The same is with politicians. They use a lot of this kind of technology to sense the environment in the way how people are reacting to their decision. And we have industry solutions I just mentioned before in the previous slide, in finance, healthcare, security, traffic, games, driverless car, robots, everything that we talk until now. Again, I invite you to study further and to try to make a connection with your field of study or with the field of work that you may think of being working in some years from now. So the first technology I want to talk to you is about speech signal processing. Speech signal processing is about uh, the ability of the machine or the capacity of the machine to recognize our voice and to answer to our commands. For example, Alexa or Siri is pretty much using this technology. This technology has been applied in medical dictation, speech dictation, voice operated computer systems, phone customer service, etc. And the future of this technology is pretty much about natural language processing, which we will see following. We have the computer vision as well. Computer vision technology, image processing, image recognition, and image understanding. We have applications in the medical image analysis, uh, shopping, identifying suspect insecurity and surveillance fields. And this is a very useful and practical application for our daily lives. You may be noticing that already. For example, if you can do face recognition in your mobile phone, you are using this kind of technology. But uh, this technology can have a huge impact for us, for, for us as a society as well. For example, if you think about the surveillance, the, for example, in United Kingdom, 
London is one city with a huge quantity of cameras, surveillance cameras. So all these cameras now are embedded with artificial intelligence. And again, I will not give you all the answers. I suggest you to search for more information and see how this artificial intelligence use it in cameras for surveillance of the public are being used for what purposes and then as well which kind of challenges and let's say assumptions it brings to us for example fairness for example prejudice for example biases this kind of things we need to think about as well we have the natural language processing that i just mentioned it Natural language processing is the ability of a system, of a machine, to understand the comments, what we are asking to the machine in our language, in the way we communicate with each other. For example, if you use Google, Gmail, or when you are typing a phrase in Word, and the software suggests to you the next word or the next phrase, you are being using natural language processing. When you ask Siri or Google or any other device or system using your voice, your command voice, you are using natural language processing. So it is used for knowledge acquisition and expression, natural language understanding, natural language generation, and we have applications in search engine, dialogue robots, chatbots, machine translations. For example, I use Grammarly. Grammarly is a natural language uh, technology and that can correct your English, your writing, suggest improvements, and so on and so forth. We have as well college implants examination robot, intelligence office secretary, uh, several applications in sales. Again, I will not give you all the answers. I invite you to deep research on this field that is very interesting and is progressing very fast. Now, I will show to you an application that's very interesting. It works with a neural network that learns to recognize in doodling. I will not make a demonstration here. Again, I suggest you to stop the video, give a quick search on Google engine writing, quick draw from Google, and then you can play around with it and have some fun. What this uh, system does, it recognizes what you are drawing and make comparisons with a very big database of doodling that they have. Actually, they have a database with more than 50 million samples. I invite you again to have a look and to play around. Another application that I want you to see is this one. It's called AVA. AVA is another artificial neural network that can compose, create a new music based on famous music. So you can set up your free account in AVA. You don't need to have credit card, nothing like that. You just set up an account, sign in and then you can play around and create four musics per month for free. It's very interesting. But what I want you to think is not only in the fun side of this, but as well, how is the impact, for example, for the musicians? If you think about a marketing agency that creates advertisement campaigns for radios and televisions, how this can be used. And how about the work of the musicians and all the other workers working in this industry? How can they make this technology as a partner and not a competitor? So I suggest you to have a look, play around with these technologies as well, and then you can start building your critical thinking about the good side of this technology and about the challenge that we have due to this technology. So now uh, I invite you to go to an online quiz. I will post the address here and answer some questions to reinforce your learning. You can access the questions of the quiz in this address. I uh, look forward to receive your answers. 
And in the next tutorial, I will be able to show to you the results, the consolidation of the results and some analysis that I've been collecting from other students as well. I hope you have enjoyed our first encounter, our first tutorial, and looking forward to meet you again soon. Bye-bye.